Hi all, hope you're all staying safe and doing well out there. Today we've got another video on one of my amps in this series of just going through all the amplifiers I own. This is the E-Wave uh, DG50RH, which is a beast of an amplifier head. This is what I would consider my main amp, as it kind of just does everything I could ever ask an amp to do. Has all the features I would ever want in an amplifier. It's just a really fantastic, versatile, do-all guitar amplifier. So let's start by going through the specs. It is a two-channel, all-tube amplifier. We have four 12 AX7s in the preamp and two 6L6 tubes in the power amp, so going for more of a American vibe. There is a independent EQ, independent three-band EQ for each channel, so we have a volume and reverb for the master, so that affects both channels. The clean channel has a bass, middle, treble, a bright switch and a level. And the dirty channel has a level, bass, middle, treble and gain. There's also a low and high input. It is 50 watts with a real spring reverb uh, at the back. It's got a line out on the back. It has a effects loop at the back. You can uh, run an atom cab. I think you can run two atom cabs at the same time as well, as well as a 16 ohm cab. So if you haven't heard of the brand E-Wave before, I don't blame you, but they are a Chinese amp manufacturer. They're actually a OEM manufacturer uh, that put their own brand E-Wave on some of their amps, um, but they were rebranded as Piranha amps. So you can go watch my other video on a Piranha combo amp. I'll leave a link to that one in the in the description below. And you can go and get a potted history of the E-Wave brand and how they're linked to the Piranha brand of amplifiers. So you will see this E-Wave guitar amp rebranded with the Piranha logo instead of the E-Wave logo. You can see it's going for the Hughes and Kettner thing of having the blue kind of lit up plexiglass it looks nowhere near as good as a real Hughes and Kettner. The lights are so dim, they really half-assed it, which is a real shame. But it does sound really good. So we'll be using my PRS SE Custom 24 for some single coil sounds and some humbucker sounds because of coil splits. We're going through a homemade 1x12 cabinet with a Bigera vintage 30 style speaker in it, it's closed back. And I've also got some pedals on the floor on my demo pedal board, which I will do an overview of so you can see what they are. So let's start with the really beautiful Fender-esque clean channel, especially with that spring reverb, it's sounding very Fender-y. So as you can see, very full, very Fender style in its sound. It's really nice for that funk thing, really nice for that ambient, just open chord strumming. Let's uh, turn on the bright switch. Uh, so counterintuitively, the bright switch turns to the off position to turn it on. Uh, but let's have a listen to how that sounds. It is a very bright, bright switch. So we'll go to the neck pickup in humbucker mode. So that's bright switch off, let's turn it on. So it's almost sounding like a, a pretty full sounding bridge pickup with the bright switch on. So that's there if you've got a darker sounding guitar, maybe for a Les Paul or a 
ES335 style thing. If we turn the master volume down and the clean channel volume up, then we get a nice crunch. crunch there uh, so you've got that super crystal clean channel and you can crank that up into some bluesy rock territory if you want sounds really nice really natural sounding overdrive especially boosted with a tube screamer type pedal if we go back to crystal clean we can have a listen to how it takes pedals just as a perfectly clean amp so here's without if we put on the uh, black box overdrive pedal platform amplifiers I've ever tried. It's uh, no matter what pedal you're putting in front of it, it sounds fantastic. It takes fuzzes really well, it takes drives and distortions really well. Really beautiful clean channel. You could really get this amp just as a clean pedal platform and not even look at the second channel. Speaking of that second channel though, let's jump over to that where we're going into some pretty heavy, very heavy rock, going into metal territory. Uh, reminds me a little bit of the classic like late 90s, early 2000s uh, new metal Mesa Boogie single rectifier sound. So let's hear that now. <laughs> absolutely rips it's very bass heavy I've always found which if you're recording a lot you'll need to take that bass out uh, but in the context of a band sounds fantastic it's a really loud amplifier I should mention that but for a 50 watt amplifier it does really really well being a quiet actually bedroom amplifier sounds pretty good especially on that clean channel turned well down I've used it a lot late at night and it's fantastic so if we jump on that dirty channel again and boost it with a tube screamer to create a lead sound, uh, we get a really beautiful cutting lead. <laughs>
So it is a real screamer of an amplifier. It's definitely got that American voice. Uh, it's a beautiful amp because it's got like the uh, blackface style clean voice on the clean channel. Then you switch it over to the drive channel, all of a sudden you're in Mesa Woogie territory. It's a really affordable amp as well if you find one used on the used market. Uh, they retail for not a lot for the features that you get. I think I've seen a few of them go for five or six hundred dollars. I mean, that's a lot of amp for the money. There's not a lot wrong with it, really. The only complaint I've ever had with it is when I got it, the tubes needed to be replaced pretty quickly, but to be fair, I did get it uh, used, although it hadn't been used much by the original owner. And it is very big and bulky. It's not actually super heavy, uh, but it's pretty big for a 50 watt amplifier head. Uh, I mean, it looks rock and roll on stage, but if you don't have a lot of space in your studio, it's uh, taking up a lot of excess room that it probably doesn't need to take up. So there is my review slash demo, well demo with my opinions I guess, on the E-Wave DG50RH. I always forget the name, it's not a very catchy name. I really hope you enjoyed this one guys, I really hope why you can see this is my main amplifier. Although I should disclaimer that, that I did just get another amp in recently, which I'm really liking as well. It's a lot more simple than this. Uh, it doesn't quite sound as good as this, but I'm liking it just for the portability of this other amp. Uh, but you'll see that in another video. It's a Vox amp, I'll give you that clue. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this one guys, and I'll see you in the next video.